Okay, so if everyone starts standing, what we're going to start, we're going to start with the legs, uh, so the shoulder width apart, and the hands on the thighs like this. Keep the elbows tucked in and then tip forward, keeping your back as straight as possible. Now concentrate on making sure the length from your tailbone to your head is as long as possible. Now the sequence is going to be, I'm going to show you a gentle version and a more advanced version. So one version is to slowly bend the knees and sink down. And then don't worry about straightening the legs all the way, but start to straighten the legs and push them closer to straight. So it's like the gentle version. You bend down, you look up, you try and squat as low as you can, and you push forward and go back. A more advanced version, I guess, is the hands are here. And what happens is as you go to your squat, the elbows go forward and then as you come forward they roll so as you come forward they can come forward they can even come up behind up above your head if you're more open and then forward, forward. we're just going to keep doing that a couple of times to warm up Side to side. So the bend the knees slowly, come up, keep your arms to shake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it up. We're going to kind of do a lower body uh, warm up and an upper body warm. -up. So it's a nice relaxing one. You're basically swinging back and forth like that drum uh, and strings. On. Okay, and then slowly tap both hips opposite hands and if that feels good you can tap your shoulder and your back and that can be quite gentle nice loose relaxing and then we're going to take it a bit further we're going to have the elbows up and if I, if I show you the direction I take our elbow towards Haroon and then I chop towards Andrea and the elbow back towards Haroon and then I chop towards Nick okay so we just go side to side one two coming back the way one Two, one, two, one, two. Okay, now we're gonna do a little balance. Uh, again, we, we can do 10, we're just gonna do five today, okay? But this should help us warm up. Show you two versions. If your balance isn't great, you can just bring the knee out and then tap it to your foot and down. If your balance is better, what can happen is you can take it out and then up but I find this really warms up your hip, okay? So either taking it out and tapping it down or taking it out to the side. So we're just gonna go five to this side, okay? So ready, one. And up. That's it, get that balance going. Out. And up, two. Three, excellent, you're starting to get the balance out now. Four. And Five, fantastic. Let's go the other way. So go the other way now. So great. And one. Two. Three. Four. And five. Okay. Now we take the arm across. And this is a great classic stretch. What I find helps with this one is if you rotate the palm up and rotate it down. So you get more of a open in the shoulder. Three, four, five. Change sides. Change side now. One, two, three, four, five. Fantastic. Now, take the arm behind you. Again, if, you, if your head's going to come forward, that's no good. So you want to keep the hand over. So if you can feel a stretch in your lap and then your here, it's fine. If you want to put the hand all the way behind and push it down with the other arm, that's fine at all. If you're more open and you can reach your fingers, uh, you can do that too. But that is a bind that we for those two weeks ago. Can't remember now. Okay. And then go the other way. So again, 
This way, like I say, if you feel a stretch here, if you feel everything opening up, do that. You want to be a little bit more intense. Take it down the back. Reach with the other hand. This is my less open side. But again, you can grab on the sides of the t-shirt. Can't quite grab. As long as you feel a stretch there, that is fantastic. Okay, so we're going to do uh, another balance opening stretch. If your balance isn't great, go next to a wall. So it's the figure four, and you're trying to sit down, okay? So let's say you can only sit down this far and back up, that's fine. If you can sit down and tap your elbows to your shin, that's great. If you can bend forward and touch your fingers to the floor, that's okay, whatever you can do. Okay, so just tipping. One. Then you're okay. Two. Three. Four. I'm concentrate now. Four. And the fifth one, we're just going to chill out there for a couple of breaths. Cool, and go to the other side. Wonderful. And then on the other side. And just tip down as low as you can go. Back up. Chill out down there. One, two, three, four, five. Come up, give it an extra shake. It's really going for the hip. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make interlocking hands forward and behind. So, if you go forward as we go up, we're trying to come up as high as we can and pop that chest. And then we sweep the arms down, take them behind us and then try and bring them up as much as we can. Again, if you want to put a bend in your legs, you can. You're trying to literally reach them all the way over your head. So that's one. Come up the other way. Two. This last one, all I want you to do is bring the hands all the way over to one side and the hands all the way over the other side. Get a little twist in the spine and the shoulders and everything else. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just give the arms a shake. So it should be quite warmed up, the weather's kind of warm, so it's fine. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at um, the runner's pose stretch today and all the different variations of it. So if you can't do all these variations of it, don't worry at all. But what I find is like runner's pose, uh, front stance, all these things, they're, they're really the key for like overall lower body flexibility, okay? So take one leg out, it doesn't, doesn't matter which one, and bend it. So this is what we call Warrior one or warrior two or front stance, okay? Now I don't mind if you've got back foot down or back foot up. What I need you to be able to do is put both hands to the floor. If you can't get both hands to the floor, um, please feel free to put them on blocks, okay? Now, it's a little bit of a balance. So let's see how we go. Whichever foot you have forward, it's gonna be the other hand you're gonna raise. So raise your hand and you're trying to get your two arms in line with each other. So Steve, you see how your shoulder's going forward? I want you to come up onto your fingertips. See, see that more openness? So again, now bend the knee more. See that openness in the shoulders, that's what you want, okay? 
Now bring the hand back down and then twist to the back of the room. And the same thing, you want both shoulders in line. If it's too much for you, just come up higher onto a block on your fingers. Okay, cool. Then bring both hands down and bring the knee to the floor. So let me just show you the sequence. We're going to have a flow. I'm going to do about three of them. You don't have to go on time with me, but watch me first. I'm going to bring the hand up. Uh, sorry. I'm going to bring the hand up and twist. So you kind of last stretch it. Then I'm going to take the hand to the back of the room and I'm going to sweep the hand forward and reach forward. Okay? So one more time, let me just show you. So I go across the body, up above. Take it behind me and then forward. Okay? I'm just going to do about three or four of those. So knee down or knee up, depending which is good for you. Okay? So you've got opposite hand down to your leg. So take it across as much as you can and then sweep it up. Once you've swept it up, take it behind you, try and look back at the hand and then come through, down, sweep down and reach forward. That's one. So take it across and up. Take it behind, look at your hand and then sweep it forward. One more time. Take it across. Sweep it up. Take it behind. Super cool. Okay, last one on this. And again, you can have back knee down or not. You can have hand on the block or not. What you're going to do from here is you're going to lunge forward as much as you can and then pick up and try and straighten the leg. Okay? So you're going to do five of these. So lunge forward and straighten any amount. Turn first and bring both hands down to the floor. Adjust yourself. Again, here. Okay, you're going to raise up opposite hand to your left. And again, you're trying to get the two arms in line with each other. That's it. Good. So try and turn your chest, turn your palm, Nick. Towards me, that's it. Good. Bring that shoulder back. Good. And hand down to the floor. Twist to the back of your arm. Okay, then you're going to do a sweeping session. So, knee down, back knee down or up. So, across your body, sweep up. Look behind you, and then sweep through the bottom, forward. Okay? And then take it across, above, behind, sweep forward. One more time. Cross the body, up. The back of the room and forward. And now start to straighten and bend the legs. Sit down, deep lunge, straight. Let's do five of these. front so we bring your legs together and this leg stretch is a long sequence um, it's one that a lot of you've done before but uh, Ryan you might not have done it with us before and Dylan you might not have been around for a stretch so these are one of the stretches where I call checkpoint stretches we're at one point and wherever we are is fine and we're always trying to get to that next stage so it's good to revisit okay so this is what I call a hip opening stretch and then we'll do a hip TLC afterwards because your hips will take a beating. Okay, so come down onto your knees. So I, I keep saying this, but the problem is with me doing all the stretches is I can't see your facial expressions. Um, like a lot of people, when they kick, they grimace, they go, Ugh! and I'm always like, no, be, be relaxed in your face. Same with your stretching. If you're tensing, if you're grimacing in your face, your, your mind is going, danger, danger, Will Robinson, stop it. So the most important thing when we're doing stretches is try and relax. And if you feel yourself tensing up or grimacing, back off. That's, that's my best advice, not just for this stretch, but for any stretch, okay? So we're going to go into a wide knee child's pose. Basically, I'm taking my knees as wide as I can, and I know you can't see it, but my big toes are touching, okay?
okay? If you have trouble sitting down like this, you can sit on a block, okay? So number one is to sit like this. This is a good way to, to sit. So knees as wide as you can, and forth. And we're going to take the hands slightly forward here. Now, the breathing pattern, the cat-cow breathing pattern, should be done for, I, I should say, like all floor stretches, especially all folding stretches. So as I breathe in, I'm looking to the ceiling and trying to arch my back. So I'm physically pushing my hands into the mat. And as I breathe out, I'm looking back at my belly button. Okay, so breathe in. Maybe your hands go a little bit further forward. As you breathe out, your head might come to the floor. One more time, breathe in. And breathe out. Now we're going to walk the hands all the way over to one side. And a common thing is the opposite hand is going to the side. You grab that um, wrist and pull it a little bit. Grab the opposite wrist and pull it across your body for an extra bit of a stretch. Cool. Then come back. This is the relaxing one. You thread one arm under the other and fall asleep on that shoulder. The other arm extends forward. And this is where you really need to chill out. up, thread the other arm through, and then lie down. Okay, cool. So that's essentially the routine. All we do now is we up the level. And if a level gets too tough, then you can always go back one. So now we're going to separate the feet and turn the toes out for what's called frog stretch. That's it, good. In the frog stretch, I find that your body starts to resist straight away. So what we're gonna do is move the hips forward and back. Now up to you how far you have your hands forward. But on a, for a lot of people now, when they cat cow, they lift their arms up, and as they cow, they drop their elbows down and push their hips back, okay? It's up to you how you do it, but that's just the way I do it here, okay? So breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, out. Breathe in, and out. Okay, now walk the arms or the elbows to one side. I'm always trying to connect my elbow to my knee. Walk the arms or the elbows to the other side. test before we go into a relaxing one. Have your hands here, maybe on your knuckles, maybe on your fingertips, or maybe hips up. Okay, and then lift and lower. One, two, three, four, five, that's enough of that nonsense. And then put your hand down and do your best to relax and always tough. Just before we go to the next stretch, 
I remember all about me when I said my legs didn't used to go this far and close to the floor, okay? So it, it does improve over time, you just gotta give it time. So bring your knees in, give your hips a little circle before we go into the level three. Now just to explain, they are big jumps up now, so level three and level four are intense. If you don't feel comfortable doing any stretches, please don't do them. And change direction, circle in the hips. So, level three is the standing split, okay? Or standing straddle. If you need to put your hands on blocks, if you need to put your hand against the wall, you can do that too. But basically, your hands are down. Now, the, the, the amount of comfort you have going wide is up to you. But what I would say is don't go to maximum 100% pain. Uh, you want to be on like the 15, 20% mark max, okay? And again, all I'm going to do is rock my hips forward and back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we're going to cat cow. So as I cat cow, I try and push my hips to the floor. As I go back, I'm always coming up onto my heels. So I push the hips in. Back. One more time, breathe in and breathe out. Now, if you don't feel stable, you can just take one hand over to your foot. If you do feel stable in your legs, you can take both hands up to one side. And both hands over to the other side. Okay, and again, if you can't do this next one, don't worry. But you're going to fold and try and lie on your shoulder. If you can't do it, just come out of the stretch. It's totally fine. This is when you know your flexibility is improving. Come up, twist. And then slowly, slowly sit in the straddle. And give your legs a pat down. I told you, pretty, pretty intense, but again, it's one of these stretches, I wouldn't recommend doing it every day, but every once in a while, it can help out. So when you're in this stretch, the most important thing is that you can sit up straight. If you can't sit up straight, please sit on as much as you need to to sit up uh, there. Start to keep your head still, but circle your hips. You can do this with your hands on your legs, your hands behind you, your hands in front of you. You're trying to make these circles, okay? So again, you're just trying to trick your body, Convince your body that this is the place you want to be and change direction. Okay, good. And now, uh, when we cat count, it's a little test. You can still cat count with your hands behind you on your legs, but again, the further you can get your hands forward, obviously the more open you're going to come. So, look up to see that. See that? One more time. Okay. And then however you can walk your hands to one side, it's fine. Walk your hands to the other side. The more extreme version of that is where you grab the foot bring the other arm over. Again, one I like is put my hand behind the head and look into the ceiling. I love that one. Because it just opens up the side body. You kind of can go a little bit further then and come over the other side. So either reach for both feet, but if you're not quite feeling it, just take your hand behind your head and look up to the ceiling. Okay, cool. Now I probably won't be able to do this today, but Another time, I could lie perfectly forward and, and, and lie down in that position. So I'm just trying to explain to you that stretching is not a linear journey. You have up days and down days, and that's fine. But your average will always improve. Like your average stretch will get better. Your maximum stretch might not be there. Does that make sense? Okay? So that's quite enough of that. We're going to give some hip TLC now. So keep the legs side to side. Oh, that's nice. I'm 
and we'll build up this. Hopefully, it'll, it'll feel quite nice. So we turn over, and we just turn our whole body over on the one side. And using our hands, we walk over the other side. Again, if you want to give yourself um, a little size, you can put your you can put your forearms to the floor. And turn. Maybe you try and get your head down blocks or to the floor. Extend that leg and go into full pigeon. And again, the exact same thing. I'm just trying to lean forward. Maybe you take your hands up in front of you to make the stretch slightly more intense. But throw it to you, whichever you feel comfortable. Okay, you come on the other side. on the floor. So if I show you with this leg, probably easier. So the easy version will be the leg goes out and you bring it back in. Leg goes out, back in. Harder version is you brace this foot, lift your hips up and go forward and go back. Okay? So this is just round one, it's gonna get harder and then I will I will go on the other levels. Okay? So just gonna do ten on one leg and ten on the other leg, okay? So ready and go for it. So out and in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Easy, right? And the other side. Okay. And then lift the hips and go around the Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fantastic. Now, even though it's only one circle, you should be able to get both heels on the disc. Should. Okay, and then you put your hands to the side, lift your hips, both feet go out, both feet go back. Now it may be, uh, just to explain, you can push your foot out with your hips up, 
and then when you want to bring the disc back in, you've got to drop your hips to the floor. That's totally normal, okay? So just play around with it, it's not an exact science, okay? So lift your hips, take the legs out, and see if you can pull them back in. Oh, that's much harder. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Four and ten, just. So, again, with these techniques, it's okay to fail, okay? If that was really tough for you too, stick with that. If you would like a challenge now, you have one foot in the air, you take one leg out, and again, you might be able to take your leg out with the hips off the floor, and then to bring your legs back, you might need to drop your hip to the floor. It's totally normal, okay? We're gonna try five each side. I'm probably gonna fail horribly, okay? So we weak hamstrings at the moment, okay? So ready, going out. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I've been right on target, my leg cramped up. On number five, cramp, cramp, that's good too. And then the other leg, let's go for it. One, two, three, four, five. So it just proves you you don't need expensive gym equipment, just a slippery floor and a sock, okay? So the next kind of uh, conditioning we're going to do, um, because I, I really think the conditioning can help you. No one likes doing the conditioning, it's not. And this one's, this is, this one's the best. If you haven't done this one before, this one's a bit of fun. This is called the pissing dog. Okay, it's actually it's the actual name of the, the pose, okay? I didn't make it up. But once you see it, you'll realize straight away. So if I can explain to you what's going to happen, I'm going to be on all fours. I want to keep everything neutral, like I was resting something on my sacrum, okay? And then for 20 seconds, I'm just going to lift my leg up like a pissing dog, okay? And we're going to do two rounds on one side, and we're going to do two rounds on the other. It's 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. All right, just a minute. Okay, you ready? Lift in one leg. Okay, and ready, go for it. So you want to keep everything still. And you want to get the knee, the foot, the hip all in line with each other. Okay, and rest. Give it a hip. We're going to lift the same leg up again. And lift, go. Shake, other leg now lifting, pissing dog. And go for it. Relax, give your hips a shake. Same leg again, three, two, one, go for it. And relax. So we're gonna do all that again with a slight variation. If you're going to lift your leg really high on this, you've done it wrong. So if I explain, this time my leg is out straight, my heel is up and my big toe is down. I should only be able to lift it a few inches off the floor. And this muscle here, the good old glute med, will be on fire, okay? So if you can lift your leg really high, something's gone wrong, okay? You shouldn't be lifting your leg really high, just to explain. Okay, so again, we're going to do two, two rounds on one leg and two rounds on the other leg, if you can. 
If not, just go back to the, the, the bent leg version. Okay, lift, a big toe down, heel up. Push, push into the floor with your hands. Keep everything still and steady. And relax, same leg again. So make sure the heel and the hip are in line with each other. That's important. A lift. And relax. A little shake at the side. Rest. Last one, I promise. And we can chill out on our backs. Look. Chill out. Okay, so lie on your backs. Time to chill out. Grab onto your knees, grab onto your ankles, grab onto your feet on the inside. Whatever you're doing is not as happy, baby. Push your back to the wall and just slowly walk side to side. Then bring your feet together. Let's about to fly. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to straighten one leg as I pull the other knee to the floor. So I always think of like a bow and arrow for this bit. I don't know why. Then switch. And then once you've got it, roll slightly back and forth. So basically it's an excuse to roll your spine on the floor. Okay, cool, then take the feet slightly wider than your hips. And basically you're gonna do the windscreen wipers side to side, keeping your shoulders on the floor. to one side and look over your opposite shoulder. So I want to intensify the stretch slightly. You can take the bottom foot and wrap it over the top knee. Bring your back in, give your knees one more hug. I want to let you do here is do little circles with my knees after we've done big inner thigh stretches. It's nice just to feel the motion. And you know, I'm trying to just change direction of the circles. Nice and relaxed. Try and get rid of any tension. And when you're ready, rock from side to side, slowly rock yourself up to seated. I feel better from stretching, hope you all do. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Well done, everyone. Take care.
<laughs> Just put your discs back on the shelf out by the toilet.